Good morning, good afternoon, or good night, or whatever time it may be in your part of the world. My name is Mr. John Wayne, and I am a variety gamer. I play everything from the Fallout franchise all the way to the Soulsborne series. Welcome everybody to another episode of my Elden Ring walkthrough. I hope everybody's doing well. I know that I am, and today we are going to be making our way to the Church of the Dragon Communion. But before we do, I have a few things to talk about. And first things first, I did farm up 24,000 runes. And how I did that is I went to the Grace up there by the gate and the encampment behind us. And I would clear out the encampment, run back to that Grace, rest at it, and then do it all over again. I also ended up getting quite a few smithing stones doing that. The Godric soldiers have a good chance of dropping smithing stones. So if you do decide to farm up some extra ruins for levels, you're most likely going to get a lot of smithing stones while you're at it. So if you want to go over to the smithing bench at the Church of Ella and level up your weapon before we start this video, you're more than welcome to. I'm going to wait until after we get through the Limgrave tunnels and then we'll go upgrade our weapon and continue on. So now that that's all been said, let's go ahead and level up real quick. I have enough ruins to level us up to 17 across the board in vigor, endurance, strength, and dexterity. We're going to get those all up to 20 and then we're going to work on arcane faith and mind next. We're going to follow this down. But before we do, let's go ahead and go to our map. By pressing X, you can put markers on your map. We're going to put a marker there because that's the Limgrave tunnels. And then we're going to come over here, put a marker over here because that's where we're going to be going next after the Limgrave tunnels. And then one more marker about right here. And that's the coastal caves. And we'll be going there last to go to the Church of the Dragon Communion. All right, for now, we're going to be listening out for a voice calling us over. You, you there. Could you help us out, Cully? You? Y yeah, you there. Stop pretending you can't see me. So we're going to roll into this bush and break the spell. <sighs> oh. What'd you go and do that for? Let's talk to Bach. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. I remember. Some clod turned me into a tree. You were just breaking the spell, weren't you? Thank you. The name's Bach. I was pushed out of the cave. Told not to come back. Not ever. Then I ended up as a tree. <laughs> Lucky you came along, really. Oh, what a shame. When they threw me out of the cave, they took everything I owned. And so this is all I have to express my thanks. I hope you can forgive me. Or, well, if you can afford to wait for a while, I could sneak back into the cave and bring back something of actual value. Then I'd be of some real use to you, I reckon. We're going to leave Bach B. I want to hold X and press up on the D-pad to get onto Torrent. If we ride over here to where this telescope is, this is a bird's eye telescope. It'll give you a bird's eye view of this area. We're going to actually veer off and come down this little embankment here. 
if you hold circle, you can run with torrent. And when you run with torrent, if you click in L3, you can hop off torrent. That way you don't have to hold X and um, press up on the D-pad. You can just hit L3 to hop off torrent. Right here, let's examine the summoning pool and activate it. We'll hop back on torrent. Be very careful not to go by that bonfire. You will initiate a boss fight and it will be a dragon and we are not ready to fight that dragon just yet. So kind of hang by the side of this cliff side here. And you can hold circle to have torrent run. If you come over here, a crab's gonna pop out. You can fight that crab if you want. I'm not going to. We're gonna use L3 to hop off torrent again. And then right here in this elevator, we're gonna send it down, but we're not gonna ride on it. We're actually gonna pull out our torch. And right here we can see a ledge to roll down onto. There's nothing in this first tunnel, but there is something in this tunnel down below. Or not down below, but at the back. Right here we want to jump. Don't roll. A lot of times you'll fall to your death if you do. You can roll over here though. It's close enough. And then right here we're going to touch this grace and light it. And then we're going to activate this summoning pool as well. Right here, these stone diggers, they're obviously made out of stone. If you're one-handing your weapon and you smack them, you're going to bounce right off. So your best bet is to two-hand your weapon by holding X and hitting R1. And then smacking them and getting a stagger on them. Now, depending on what kind of weapon you're using is if you're going to stagger them not, or stagger them or not. Jeez, I cannot talk. I can never talk. These words are not my friend. Right here we have a guy that's going to throw stones at us. But we can get behind him. Bring him over here. We don't want to accidentally hit the other stone digger. And what we can do, because he's um, digging, we can do two charged R2s and then an R1. So one, and then two, and then hit R1 for the repost. And right here, I didn't talk about it earlier, but these outcroppings of stone that are glowing yellow these are smithing stones. You want to grab these anytime you see them on the wall. We want as many smithing stones as we can get. We're going to do two charged R2s again and then an R1. Grab some more smithing stones. And then right here, we're going to take this guy out as fast as we can because we're going to have three rats that are going to attack us in just a second here. They also have a chance to drop smithing stones along with their pickaxe. And these rats have a chance of dropping ruin ones, golden ruin ones. I'm sorry. And he dropped a pickaxe for us. We're gonna get another smithing stone. We want as many smithing stones as we can get. You can also buy smithing stone ones, well, just smithing stones in general, 
from different merchants. Right here, we're going to take this elevator down. We can hop down the sides if we want, but we don't need to. There's no items to grab. We can see a ledge that we can hop onto, and I'll do that in just a little bit. First, we want to come all the way to the bottom. We're going to two-hand our weapon again. We're going to have two dogs to kill and two stone diggers. So let's kill this dog first. And then we're going to run back here to this tunnel. Get the dog to jump at us. Take him out. And this stone digger right here is always going to be with that dog. So just be ready to fight him as well. And then we'll let that one be for just a second. We're going to grab this item right here. This is a large glint stone scrap. You can use these to throw at enemies. And when you throw them, they'll spew out a bunch of glintstone pebbles and shoot the enemies with it. It will use FP as well, so keep that in mind. Right here, we're going to do two, two charged R2s. And I am fumbling all over my words today, I'll tell you what. And then we're going to grab some more smithing stones. One hand our weapon so it, we can see. And then right here, one more smithing stone behind this shack. All right, so we want to face away from the tunnel. And when we do, as soon as we see that ledge, we're going to hop off this elevator. So hop off the elevator. Oh, that was super close. Don't do not do what I did. I almost killed myself. Right here we have a statue of Queen Marika. Or Merica. Marika, Merica. Uh, either way. So we know a boss is coming up. I'm going to go ahead and take this guy out. Get two tar charged R2s. Get a glintstone scrap. And we get an explosive stone. So the guys with the glowing rocks in their back have a chance to drop explosive stones. And they do exactly what you would think. They explode when you throw them. We'll grab another smithing stone. That guy's far enough away. We can run over here. Take care of this guy. Real quick. Run away. He's going to spew out some fire. Get a few hits on this guy. And then deal with the lantern holding guy. The lantern holding guys are a little more dangerous than the other guys. And the reason why is because they can just catch you off guard so quick. And that fire that they spew out from their lantern lasts for so long. We're going to do another two charged R2s. And then an R1 for the repost. I'm sure you guys are tired of me saying that by now. We'll get another explosive stone. And then we get another smithing stone. So right here, I'm going to leave this elevator up here. And the reason why is because if any of you die, it's a quick run back past all these guys. You don't have to fight them. Run over to this elevator, ride it on down, and then send it back up if you don't feel comfortable that you're going to beat the boss again. So that you can just keep running back and do a boss run. All right, right here, we're going to hop off. Or fall off, whichever one. We're going to keep coming over here. And then we want to jump right over here. We're going to pillage this corpse. This is going to give us a golden rune one. And then down here, we're going to get our first sombering smithing stone. 
We don't have a weapon that's going to use Sombering Smithing Stones to upgrade it just yet, but we will eventually, and when we do, I'll uh, go over that then. But for now, we're just going to hold on to it. Right here is our last Smithing Stone in this uh, Limgrave Tunnels. And then we have the boss fight. So what we want to do is we want to summon in our wolves as soon as we get into the boss room. They're not going to be very beneficial, but they will help out a little bit. This is going to be a lot of jumping and hitting R2 and charged R2s to knock this uh, boss down. All right, summon in your wolves and then just run over here. Try not to get stomped on like me. When he does that, you want to run away. That AOE is way too big. Does not need to be that big, but Whatever, it is what it is, right? Heal ourselves up. He's almost dead. Last hit. Killed the stone digger troll. And then we also get the roar medallion. We could use this uh, string of light to go to the entrance of the tunnel. We're not going to do that. We're going to fast travel over to the Church of Ella. I'll see over, I'll see everybody over there in just a second. We're going to talk to Kale in just a minute. Or Kale. I, I really don't know how to pronounce his name, even though he says it. First, we're going to use the smithing table. We're going to strengthen our armament. We're going to make our Lord Sworn's Greatsword plus three. So one, two, and then three. It's going to take 12 smithing stones in all to make it a plus three. We can two-hand our weapon real quick. Before we talk to Kale... We're going to go into our inventory, use up any golden runes we have. We're going to use selected number, press down, use all 11 of them. Wait, weren't you? Well, you're back. Care to buy something? We're going to purchase ourselves the missionaries cookbook one. And the Nomadic Warriors Cookbook 1 and 2. Along with the three cracked pots. And then it's up to you if you want to buy the telescope or not. I'm going to buy it just in case I want to show um, everybody something off in the distance. But you don't have to buy it. Totally up to you. Same goes for any of the armor here. You can buy all that stuff if you'd like. This is all just tips and stuff. I know all the stuff we need to know on um, the tips. So I'm not going to bother with that. And you can also buy for calling finger remedies. But they're so easy to make. I feel like this is just a waste of runes. So I wouldn't buy them. Alright, let's go ahead and leave. Goodbye. Nice to do business. Real quick, we're going to ride over here and come down this way and ride over to this second marker. So let's hop on Torrent. We're going to fight a troll as well. You don't have to fight this troll. If you don't feel comfortable, you can ride right past him. But he is worth 1,000 runes. So I always fight them. Sometimes I die, sometimes I don't. They are a little difficult early in the game because you're just not as strong as what 
you know, maybe oh, he's going to jump. I thought I was out of the way, but I was not. Heal. There we go. Get him to fall down. And he's dead. We get two flasks back for killing him. We're going to hop on Torrent one more time. Head towards the second marker here. And then we see this sparkling trail over here. We're actually going to use our Ash of War ability by two-handing our weapon and hitting L2 when it's close by. And we'll kill our first Scarab. And that's going to give us the Ash of War stamp. And that's going to be a sweep attack. You can kill these birds, you can get flight pinions from them, so if you're crafting uh, bone arrows or anything like that, good way to be able to do that. You can also get the four-toed foul foot from them, which we just got right there is a four-toed foul foot, and that can be used to make a item that will allow you to have better item discovery. Right here we have a skull, can smash it, get ourselves golden rune, take this guy out, we get the dismounter, that's actually a pretty decent sword, if you get that drop you can always uh, farm these guys for two of them. Get a white strip, or get a strip of white flesh. Oh my goodness, words today. Words, Mr. Wayne. Smoldering butterflies. We're going to have these land octopus over here. They're huge. I don't recommend fighting them. They're not worth the ruins, and they're actually quite... Quite a tough fight at the beginning of the game. Um, even towards the end of the game, they're, they're quite difficult. Right here, we're going to pick up a land octopus ovary. And one more thing. So if you see a glowing skull, you can run over it with torrent and it'll break it. That way you can pick up the item without having to use your weapon to swing at it. Real quick, if you're running... And you hop off Torrent to get a jumping attack with R2. You get some massive damage. So keep that in mind. There's so many different ways to fight in this game. Especially on horseback. Right here is the cave we'll be going into in just a minute. First we want to go over here to a merchant and buy a few things. Grab the smoldering butterfly. What do you need? I don't want any trouble. We're going to purchase this armor's cookbook. And then I think I'm going to grab the short bow as well. I'm not going to worry about arrows just yet, but I'm also going to buy the three smithing stones. And then if you want to buy any of these bolluses, feel free. One's for poison, one's for uh, blood loss, and the other one's for sleep buildup. So they're all useful. All done? Well, be on your way then. Let's go ahead and hop back on Torrent.
over here we're well it's gonna give us a tutorial for a bow over here we're gonna have some skelet skeletons pop up we're just here for the gold pickled fowl foot and then right here is a spirit spring you can use those to get up to high places they'll let you jump really high with torrent you can also use them when you're in high places to jump down on and they'll make sure that you don't take any fall damage and i'll show that off in just a bit not in this video but in another video that we're actually going to have that dilemma And the Golden Pickled Fouled Foot, that's used to have better item discovery, I believe it is, or more runes. I don't know which one it is. It's one or the other. Get rid of this uh, beacon here. Go ahead and one hand our weapon. When we go through this uh, cave, we're going to see Bach again. He's going to be hurt. We're not going to talk to him. We're just going to leave him be. And come back and talk to Bach after we beat the boss. The only reason I want to say that now is because he's going to be having a ton of dialogue while we're walking over and grabbing the grace and um, also activating, activating the summoning pool. So let's go do that now. So we're just going to run past him and then down here we're going to take this guy out first so he doesn't alert his buddies. We get ourselves some string that can be useful in crafting along with this cave moss. Take these guys out. They're not hard especially with us upgrading our sword. They're definitely not hard. Take that guy out. And then there's going to be a big dude with a big club. Take him out first. And then take this little guy out. This big guy can hurt if he hits you. Get some more string. Some more cave moss. They do have a chance to drop their falchion. Right here we get another land octopus ovary. And then right here we have a summon. This right here is old knight Estevan or Estevan. I call him Estevan. You call him whatever you want. We're going to summon him in because I want to show everybody something real quick. I will leave the uh, torch on. I was going to two hand but... We won't just yet. Okay, so we have him summoned in. We're going to two hand. We're going to come in here and summon in our wolves. So just because we summoned him in doesn't mean that we can't summon our wolves as well. Be sure to put your flask back on so that you don't accidentally try to desummon your wolves as you're fighting and you need to heal yourself. Trust me, I've done it way too many times than I'd like to admit. It just happens. Be careful. There are two bosses in here. They're not hard, but just be careful. Because you're going to have to fight two of them at the same time. That's why I recommend summoning in Estevan, just because there's two bosses. They're not really that hard. But again, they can overwhelm you really quick. Just being that there's two of them along with other demi-humans. No! Go ahead and heal ourselves real quick. There we go. 
So we get the tailoring tools, which is going to allow us to alter our clothing and our armor. And we're also going to get the sewing needle, which we can give to Bach in just a minute. These wolves are tearing up these demi-humans here. Grab these silver fireflies. Because we killed their chiefs, they're scared. They don't want to come next to us. We scared them off. We're going to backtrack. If you see the string of light, you're going the wrong way. We're going to go over there eventually. You want to backtrack towards Bach. We want to go give him that sewing needle. you go and do a thing like that my mum was a seamstress and that sewing kit was all i had to remember her by i always wanted to be just like sweet old mum oh, then i s suppose i i can't just curl up and die can i let's go back to the boss room We're going to fall down right here. We won't take any fall damage. We'll be all right. Jump up here. We have a guy right here. We're going to take out. And then we have two more demi humans. Get a glowstone. I explained what those do in the last video. Get a smoldering butterfly. Some more cave moss. And then continue forward. Even more cave moss. Always be picking up stuff, by the way. That way you can craft whatever you need. We're going to take our torch off. If we look over there, we can kind of see a silhouette of a cave. That's where we entered at. We actually went underneath this river to get over to this island here. Pretty cool stuff. I love the way FromSoft interconnects their worlds and their um, areas. Over here are a bunch of goats you can kill for their thin beast bones. So if you're ever looking to farm up some uh, thin beast bones, this is the spot. Grab ourselves the site of a lost grace. And then we're at the Church of Dragon Communion. If we come up to this altar here, we can examine it and do a ritual of dragon communion. And we can see that we have three dragon spells. We cannot buy them just yet. We need dragon hearts to be able to get those. And we don't have any dragon hearts. To be able to get a dragon heart, you have to beat a dragon. So we haven't done that just yet. We will do that eventually before we leave Limgrave altogether. We're going to run right over here 
through this broken piece and hop up on to this spot right here. And we have a developer message. If you're facing directly east, it reads, far to the east, you'll find the Cathedral of Dragon Communion, a place where draconic power gathers. So it's saying somewhere off to the far east, we're going to find a cathedral to Dragon Communion. We won't find that till much, much later into the walkthrough. Uh, and when we do, we're going to get some pretty awesome dragon spells. Right here, we're going to get the Exalted Flesh. Exalted Flesh can be very useful. If you want to read uh, what the item does, I believe it boosts your attack. Be careful when it turns night, there's these jellyfish over here. If you hit them, they're going to spit poison at you. Right there's the crack in the wall that we went through. We're going to come around here. We're going to two-hand our weapon. And we have another glowing skull. Might as well hit it. Never hurts to have golden runes. And then if we look right over here, we can see a scarab. If we hop down, hit R2 for a plunging attack, we can get ourselves another Sombering Smithing Stone 1. So now we have two Sombering Smithing Stone 1s. You can kill those birds for some flight pinions if you'd like. I'm going to come over here. And right here, we're going to grab an item. This is going to be our first Smithing Stone 2. Will not be our last that we get. For now, what we're going to do is we're going to come up to where the Church of Ella is. We're going to fast travel over there and we're going to end the video. So I'll see everybody at the Church of Ella. All right, everyone. I want to start by telling you thank you so very much for stopping by and watching the video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the thumbs up button. If you didn't, hit the thumbs down button. Let me know why down in the comments below. It only helps the channel. Also, if you enjoy content just like this, be sure to subscribe or don't. I don't know. I'm not your dad. Do whatever you want. And like always, everybody, have a good morning, a good afternoon, or a good night or whatever time it may be in your part of the world, Mr. John Wayne, signing off.